I don't go to the beach. I go to the river. First time I ever saw the Maca River, my thoughts were that this is the Florida I knew when I was a boy and the Florida I wanted to preserve for my family and coming generations. In 1971, a friend of mine called me and asked me if I wanted to buy a piece of land on the Maca River with three other friends and I said, go ahead and buy it and I never had seen it. When I first came to Sarasota in 1948, there were 12,000 people in the whole county. The whole bayfront was all little houses, and US-41 didn't exist. All the roads were shell or dirt. It's grown a lot. I decided a long, long time ago that I was going to be a senator someday, and I did. I came to Sarasota because it was a city of the arts and education. And it was also a county where somebody with my views as a Republican could get elected. Tamaka is just a special place in Sarasota County. After I bought the property, I went down one day to look at the property. I couldn't get in, you know. I had to really chop a trail with a machete. So then I started going down there with my family who were children, and we built a lean-to and a picnic table and just sort of hung out there on weekends. Almost all my favorite stories are related to family and land along the river, like having a Thanksgiving dinner and looking out and seeing like 14 turkey walking across our yard. One day I was showing my grandchildren how to attract buzzards, and I put a bunch of chicken necks out on the riverbank, and 15, 20 buzzards landed there, and all of a sudden they all scattered, and this eagle landed right there and took a couple of chicken necks and flew away. I sometimes go down there for lunch and just sit there and eat a salad or something on the deck and watch deer come out of the woods or alligator go by. During one of the floods, I was down there and my wife called me and said there was an alligator coming up the stairs. Well, I went out and looked and it was about a six foot alligator coming out of the flood water. I just went down the stairs and pushed him off with a broom into the water. I love the quietness, the peacefulness. I can just sit there and watch the world go by, whether it's a manatee going up the river or it's an eagle flying overhead in the winter, it's always a different scene. I started building my house in 93. It actually took me four years to complete it. I built it all with my own two hands. My wife would help me on weekends and sometimes my children come down, but I'll tell you, it's probably built stronger than any house in Sarasota County right now. Hurricane Charlie came within 25 miles of it and we didn't lose a shingle. I designed the house to be a lighthouse with eight sides so I could sit anywhere in the living room, dining room, kitchen area and look up and down the river and got a deck all the way around it. In the early 70s, the local director of the U.S. Geological Service Doris Sutcliffe came to me and he wanted to do a study of the Tatum Sawgrass up the headwaters of the Maca River. So I got him state money that he couldn't get from the federal government and we did the study of the headwaters and out of that the federal government undertook a review of whether it should be a national wild and scenic river. They decided it was not big enough and long enough but Director of Florida Natural Resources Elton Giesendanner came to me and said, what do we do now? So he and I sat at my dining room table that night and wrote a new bill, and I passed it through the Senate basically the next day, and that created a wild and scenic river. The interesting thing is that Manatee County didn't want to come into it, and Charlotte County didn't want to come into it. So we only have part of the river actually covered by the Wild and Scenic Act. Manatee County especially has a very serious effect because they control the headwaters. Any kind of aggressive use close to the river, it's very detrimental to the river as a whole and especially to Sarasota County. I really object to putting more people on the river in, in parks and so-called recreation. When these airboats and the wave runners and jet skis were coming up and down the river, they would undermine the riverbanks. It makes the river wider and shallower. There are times when you cannot canoe on the river without dragging your canoe across river bottom.
And then people bought tilapia for their aquarium, and then when they got too big, they threw them in the river. And so the river grasses and everything have been basically destroyed by tilapia. It, quite frankly, is becoming less and less attractive as a place to go on weekends because you got boat traffic who ignore the law. They're going to have a river cleanup day this week, and they'll bring in canoe after canoe full of trash. People have no respect for it. And to think that you're going to put more people on there and have more responsible people, it just isn't going to happen. My own view is that everyone who comes here and wants to take benefit of homestead exemption and other benefits ought to be required to go to places like Maca State Park. They'll be required to understand the water quality problems. We have to educate the people that come here as to what we need them to do to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. The only way you understand some things is to experience them. Well, I just love the river. It's been the most peaceful place we've ever gone to, and it's always been a refuge, but it's becoming less attractive with the lack of law enforcement and all the people on the river. But that's what happens, and it's called progress. I would wish, as best I can, that Charlotte and Manatee would come into it. My experience with life is, is that everything goes in cycles, and what has been before will be again. So I think right now we're in a cycle of hold the line only because of the economy. When the economy picks up, you're going to see all these developments out here trying to boom and boom and boom. No, I just hope that 100 years from now it's still preserved.